And the videos contained in this section uh, deal with electricity. And uh, we're going to be talking about electric charges, we're going to be talking about Coulomb's law, uh, electrical force associated with electric charges, electric fields, um, we're going to talk about current and resistance and voltage and capacitance and um, electromagnetic induction and magnetism and how all of these, uh, all of these electromagnetic uh, waves, um, how they're all associated with each other. And, um, you can check out this section on electricity, which covers uh, links and topics uh, for all this stuff. All right. So we have obviously we have our uh, our videos. Uh, this one here talks about um, lightning and electromagnetic induction. Um, what causes lightning? And you can also, after you've completed all of these assignments, um, you can also go to uh, take a. Uh, quiz, whether you do a, uh, a quiz that um, is uh, New York State Regents um, style, or you can take one that's a college physics style uh, quiz where you are asked a series of questions and you can um, answer and see if you're correct or incorrect. And then uh, once you're done with that, you will get a score on the end and you can, uh, you can see how much you've learned. Once again, if you go through and take these uh, New York State Regents uh, exam questions, uh, you will be fully prepared uh, to pass the New York State Regents uh, once you've reached that point, if that is what you're taking. If you take the uh, college level quizzes, then you should be prepared to pass your college uh, level physics exams. All right, so uh, now that we've talked about uh, all the information that's on this uh, site that deals with electricity, and uh, magnetism, um, we can go on to today's presentation. All right, so let's start with um, what we're looking at at an atomic level. Uh, we have an atom, and the atom is made up with uh, protons and neutrons in the nucleus and electrons uh, orbiting outside of the nucleus. Uh, the electron contains the negative charge. Uh, the protons contain the positive charge. And the neutrons are neutral, they have no charge in them. Um, and if we look at our physics reference table, New York State physics reference table, you can also see that the rest mass of an electron is 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, and the rest mass of a proton is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, and the rest mass of a neutron, according to the um, New York State physics reference table is equal to the mass of the neutron at 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. Um, now, Robert Millikan had discovered in his famous uh, oil drop experiment that the uh, electrical charge of an electron, which is also on our uh, front uh, cover here, we have um, two, 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 one elementary charge. Uh, is the charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the uh, negative 19th coulombs. And uh, the elementary charge of a proton is equal to the uh, elementary charge of an electron. So it is also uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative uh, 19th coulombs of uh, charge. Um, objects are most often charged by removing or adding electrons to them. Uh, charge from the electrons are the only charge that can be moved. So uh, protons are nice and tight in our nucleus. Uh, protons um, are not being taken in and out of the molecules, out of their nucleus and the molecules um, for the most part, especially what we're doing in these, uh, in these classroom uh, labs, is the electrons are able to uh, move uh, back and forth um, from one object to another, uh, creating an electrical charge um, that is negative and leaving an ele uh, ne electrical charge that is uh, positive um, for the um, surplus of protons if you take away an electron or the uh, surplus of electrons if you're adding electrons. Uh, we have examples of charged objects. So we had looked at that uh, rubber rod that was hanging from the ceiling and originally it had a neutral charge. It had an equal uh, number of uh, uh, positive and negative elementary charges on it. 
Uh, neutral objects have a balanced number of positive and negative charges, and uh, each one cancels each other out. And uh, we have, um, we take away uh, some of our electrons, and we end up with a uh, positively charged uh, glass rod. Charged objects have an unbalanced number of positive and negative charges. So this has uh, more uh, positive charges than it has negative charges, and that it has overall positive charge to it. Uh, we see that each charge on an object is known as an elementary charge, and the symbol we have is plus or minus one uh, lowercase e. So the lowercase e uh, means an elementary charge, and positive if you have uh, more positive charges, or negative if you have more negative charges. Um, charge of an object can be determined by finding the difference between positive and negative elementary charges. So here we have uh, a charged object, and we see that uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six positive uh, elementary charges, and only one, two, three, four uh, negative elementary charges. So the difference between the two is uh, six uh, minus four gives us a um, plus two uh, charge, a plus two E charge, because we have two uh, positive charges more than we have negative charges, and that is a plus two elementary charge. All right, sample questions. An object uh, that was initially neutral loses three electrons. Uh, what is the charge of this object? So it was neutral and lost three electrons. That means it has three more protons now, so it's a positive three E. Uh, an object that was initially neutral gains five electrons, so now it has five negative elementary charges added to it, so that's a negative 5E overall charge. Uh, rubber rod with fur, all right? Uh, the rubber rod picks up the negative charges from the fur and becomes negatively charged, all right? So we have initially neutral, and when you rub it uh, with the fur, uh, you pick up uh, negative charges, and that means that the uh, fur, uh, the conservation of charge says that the fur must have uh, these positive, uh, overall positive charges. If it lost three electrons, then it has uh, uh, overall three positive charges uh, more than it had uh, before because the neutral ones are cancel each other out if they were both neutral to begin with. All right, we have uh, hair combs gain negative charge from your hair and become negatively charged. So once again, we have, uh, if we have uh, two electrons leaving the hair, the hair is left with an overall positive charge, and the comb gains an overall to negative charge. Uh, and how does a glass rod become positively charged when it is rubbed with silk? So now when you, when you rub a glass rod on silk, you actually are taking the electrons off the glass rod uh, giving this a positive charge, and you are gathering the electrons on the silk, giving the silk a negative charge. So this is the law of conservation of charge, is that you have uh, a, a certain amount of charges, and you, you don't lose the charges. Charges can be transferred from one object to another object and back again, but you can't lose the charges. So if I am creating positive charge on here by taking away electrons, I must be creating negative charge somewhere else uh, where those electrons end up, because they have to go somewhere. Uh, types of materials. Uh, we have conductors are materials through which electrons can move easily. Uh, many metals are good conductors. They have what's called free electrons that are able to move around. Insulators are materials through which electric charges can't move easily. And this is why a lot of insulators will pick up a static charges because when you put the electrons on an insulator, uh, they become static or they stay, they stay still for the most part until they can go on to uh, another object or move on to another object. And such uh, insulators are plastics, rubbers, uh, ceramics, and wood. Uh, an electroscope is a device used for detecting uh, presence of electric charge. Uh, we have two pieces of thin foil at the bottom, 
Uh, when the electroscope is uncharged, the foil leaves are collapsed or close together. And when a, um, a charge on the metal will push the foils apart since like charges repel. So we see this. Uh, this is a simple homemade electroscope. It's a soda can on a styrofoam cup. The styrofoam cup is an insulator, so it doesn't allow it to ground on me. And we have two little pieces of foil which are hanging uh, collapsed. And if I place a charged object by it, then we should get uh, the foil uh, to spread apart. Uh, two ways to move electrons is by conduction, when electrons are actually uh, transferred by direct contact, all right, so when I touch the can, I get electrons actually going uh, from here onto the can by touching it, and then there's uh, induction, which is uh, simply by uh, having the electrons uh, close and having the object uh, move in response to those uh, charges. Induction is when the objects are rearranged without physical contact. And we'll take a look at this. So in electroscope, we have uh, no charge. It's neutral. We have an equal number of positive and negative charges. Uh, induction is when I move uh, the negative charges on the rubber rod close to the electroscope, all these negative charges are pushed down the electroscope, and the like charges of negative and negative repel each other and cause the leaves to spread out, leaving mostly positive uh, on top and a surplus of negative charge on the bottom. Remember the positive charges aren't moving up and down, but as the negative charges move down towards the bottom, it leaves a surplus of positive charge on top and you have more electrons than you had at the time, um, protons on the bottom. Uh, if we look at induction, when we move the rod away, the electrons repelling each other back so that they spread out evenly over the insulator uh, move back and the leaves collapse once again. Everything returns to normal. Now conduction is when I take these negative rod and I have more uh, negative charges on the rod than I have in electroscope. When I touch the electroscope, uh, the negative charges want to spread out from the rod and move freely on the conductor and you have uh, a surplus now of electrons uh, they came from the rubber rod and they spread out evenly so they separated from all the ones that were on the rubber rod and once again our uh, leaves uh, spread apart because there's a surplus of electrons and the leaves can move freely so the like charges repel each other and it moves but when you take away uh, the rubber rod all these negative charges stay on the electroscope so the leaves continue to be spread out until either it's grounded or something with a uh, positive uh, electrical charge touches it. Um, electric charge is quantized and that means uh, that it ha exists in a certain specific amounts. So we don't have uh, half of an electron. An electron and a proton both have a specific charge and we have full charge units. A charge is measured in coulombs. Uh, the charge of one proton or one electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Uh, a balloon has acquired a charge of negative 3.20 times 10 to the negative 17 coulombs. How many excess electrons does this charge represent? So we have a negative charge, which means you have more electrons than protons. And uh, if we take our uh, negative 3.2 times 10 to the negative 17 coulombs, and we use our uh, factor label method that uh, one electron or the number of one electron is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Uh, coulombs uh, cancels out with coulombs, and you have 200 excess uh, electrons. This also can be written in equation form, um, where Q is the charge of the object in coulombs, N is the number of elementary charges, whether it's uh, protons or electrons, positive or negative elementary charges, 
and E is the elementary charge of 1.6 uh, times 10 to the negative 19. Uh, how many elementary charges are present in one coulomb of charge? All right, so we have uh, Q equals uh, N times E, where E is our elementary charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th, and N is the number of elementary charges that it takes to create a coulomb of charge. And uh, we get an answer of 6.25 times 10 to the 18th elementary charges for one coulomb of charge. A conductor loses uh, negative 1.05 times 10 to the negative 18th coulombs of charge. How many electrons did it lose? Um, so we start with our uh, charge that we lost and we have uh, our conversion factor of uh, one uh, electron is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs of charge. Coulombs cancels out. And we have 6.56 electrons. Now remember, you can't have part of an electron. Electrons uh, exist in a whole state. Right? You get a half an electron or a quarter of an electron. So you need to have charges that equal whole numbers of protons or electrons uh, when you do these problems. If you get uh, a fraction or a decimal, that means that uh, those charges uh, were not uh, real. All right? We can't have fractions of these. Uh, electrons, you know, elementary charges are quantized.